Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. Today's video is going to be the answer part to the question and answer part video from last Thursday. So to see all of the questions and my answers, stay with me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over each question and then go through, um, I'll put my answer after each question until we get to the very end. So let's get started. Gabriel says, hey, Mr. Hino, based on your experience, what would be the single most important suggestion you would give to a person who is planning to start robotics classes for kids? What is the mistake you made and would you have wanted to know before you started? I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Gabriel, Gabrielle, it was hard to tell from your picture, you know, if it's which one it was, but great question on um, my suggestion for starting out teaching robotics. Um, the number one thing I would suggest is try not to put too much pressure on yourself um, knowing every answer right away. It was one of those things where I came into teaching robotics knowing I wouldn't know everything, but I still put that pressure on myself like, Oh my gosh, how do I not know this? Because, you know, um, I used to teach sixth grade math and science and, you know, you just had to know everything. Um, you know, if somebody came up to you with an equation, it's, you know, how you would feel if you're like, uh, I don't know how to do that. Let me look that up. So transferring from that to robotics, I felt kind of the same thing. Like, oh my gosh, how am I supposed to tell this person? I don't know what, you know, how to answer the question. So to wrap it up in a nutshell, again, I would suggest try not to put too much pressure on knowing everything. Kind of have your, you know, in your back pocket, the, uh, I guess the response, I don't know, but let's find out. And um, as we learn together, um, I still don't know everything, but I, from that first day to now, I've just, you know, going through all the experiences, you learn so much and I even have to go back to my own videos to remember how to get, you know, do some certain things, but definitely don't put too much pressure on yourself to know everything. Give yourself some flexibility and say, Phew, that's a great question. Let's find that out. Um, a mistake I would say I made was, um, and you, you kind of do this when you're trying to learn something and there's so much to learn. You just get this overload and you feel overwhelmed. Um, I think my mistake was trying to learn everything at once. If you're just starting off teaching robotics, I would say give yourself a goal of just, you know, knowing so much information and then year after year, just building upon that. Um, Cause you can overwhelm yourself. You can get frustrated. You, you, you can get to the point where you feel like, ah, this is just not working. I feel like a failure because, you know, not everything is coming at once. So, you know, give yourself a break, make little goals, just take short little steps and eventually you'll get to where you want to be. So great question. Um, would I have wanted to know that beforehand? I, you know what? I think I, I'm okay with what I did. I think the pressure I put on myself, it, it pushed me. And I, I don't know about my goals that I had set if they were too big. But I think, you know, when you set goals, you know, set goals big. And if you don't reach them, at least, you know, you went farther than if you had set small goals. So I would say I, I don't think I would have wanted to know beforehand. I think I, I learned and I think that helped me get to the way I am right now. Reluctant asks, Mr. Hino, why did you end up teaching robotics? Great question, a redundant. Um, it's a really cool story. I had been teaching sixth grade math and science forever. I think it was like around 18 years. Um, and then my principal just came up to me one day and said, hey, are you interested in teaching robotics? And at that point, I was kind of looking for something different to do. I had just been teaching math and science for so long. I'm like, yes, I want to give that a try. And it just kind of snowballed into teaching uh, two classes to now I'm teaching five classes. So it just kind of fell into my lap and my eyeballs just went out of my sockets. I'm like, yeah, I'd love to try teaching robotics. And it's just been a great ride. Um, hopefully, you know, through these videos, you can see I'm pretty passionate about it. 
and it's just been a super cool thing that happened to me. Shadow Yogi asks, hey Mr. Hino, do you play any video games? Also, I love your channel. Keep up the good work. Great question, uh, Shadow Yogi. Um, on my phone, I'm pretty much addicted to words with friends. I'm, you know, it scares me sometimes how much I play. Um, for just regular video games, I'm a super huge baseball fan. So I actually play, it's super old. I don't even know how many of you guys would know this. Uh, I play Ken Griffey baseball on my Super Nintendo. Yeah, I still have my Super Nintendo and I play it very often. So there you go, Shadow Yogi. And Robin Hill asks, Mr. Hino, I would love to know more about what you do with your sixth grade students in your robotics class. Do you have a curriculum you follow? Robin, fabulous question um, on curriculum. Um, the answer is kind of, it depends. Um, I follow the Lego Mindstorms EV3 projects. So my class does the robot arm, the color sorter, the gyro boy, and um, the puppy. Um, but I know that my students get so easily, um, like they don't want to keep following directions day after day after day. So the big thing, Robin, for me is I, I, I mix things up so my kids aren't doing the same thing for too long a period. So I'll mix in those projects where they're following directions. I'll mix that in with class competitions that hopefully you've seen on these videos like uh, the launcher, um, the war bot, um, the sumo bot. What it allows them to do is to take what they've learned and now incorporate that into some creativity where I don't, you know, that sumo bot, they, they totally create that themselves. So I get away from instructions when I go to these class competitions. Then we'll go to the FLO board. They'll do um, board challenges like Trash Trek and Hydrodynamics and Into Orbit. So um, I try to mix all of those things in. Uh, we also do like the color sensor maze. Um, so I try to not do too much instruction where they're following page because I know they get really easily, you know, like, oh, some more following directions, this piece, this piece. Um, the kids are starving for creativity. They want to be able to do their own thing. Um, I've actually had students, kind of like that video you saw with Landon, he wanted to make his own thing, that robot arm that you saw. Um, I'll put a link you know, at the end of this video to that. Um, but they're, they're starving to just do their own thing. So within those other projects, I give them a chance to also be creative and do their own thing so they can feel like, yeah, I'm doing the project that we're supposed to, but I get to do what I want to do. So I have to incorporate the flexibility into my curriculum for that. So Robin, the answer I guess to you is no, I don't have like this official curriculum, but I've been doing the same things year after year. So it feels like it's my curriculum, um, but no, it's nothing connected to Lego. Like I'm not running off worksheets or anything like that. Uh, we just kind of go through each thing and I make my own evaluations. Um, they evaluate their partner. So there are some things I do for their grade, but I try to keep it simple because I know that they're in other classes, they have homework. So I try not to make my class too, you know, strict that way. Okay, guys, thank you so much for your questions. Um, it was an awesome q and I would have loved to have answered more questions, but um, that's the way this video goes. So thank you for your questions. Hopefully the answers steered you in the right direction. Um, if there's something unclear, you can feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section. Other than I got that. So thank you guys for this Q&A session with Mr. Hino. I love your questions. Hopefully I was able to steer you in the right direction. Um, for those of you definitely starting out teaching robotics, um, if there's something I missed, feel free to leave me a comment or question in the comment section. I'll answer every one that you put there. Um, but yeah, it's an exciting time for robotics. Hopefully you're having fun. Um, would have loved to answer more questions, but that's just the way we rolled on this video. Okay guys, I am Mr. Hino from Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. I am out.